Hello, yeah, um, yeah, I'm gonna do like a, um, G1, uh, the kind of the rocky area they're always on where the arc is in, in G1, here I'll do something like that in the background. And now I'm just kind of filling in the large black spaces here. Oh yeah, getting up too high. You know, sometimes they go high, sometimes they don't. That's, you know, one of the risks of eBay. One of the things I put up sold for 20 bucks last time. You know, the other one sold for over 100. So, you never know, really. But, yeah, sorry it, sorry it went too high for you. It's hard to tell the market for some of this stuff, you know, so I throw it up on eBay and let, let the market decide itself.
color his hands are. Oh, his forearms are green. Hmm. Oh, well. Um, yeah, the one that went for $20 was um, something I did for the uh, Collector's Club magazine back in the day. Um, it's like a Beast Wars, obscure Beast Wars figure, or character, I should say. All right. I guess I'll do a little shadow under here, too. This is protruding, if I can say that significantly, right here. So we're going to hit a little shadow under there. Let's add a little, little depth. Yeah, yeah, he's a uh, Grimlock's, you know, one of those, uh, I almost feel like a Wolverine-like figure, like one of the more popular, uh, typical G1 characters. Um, I usually don't do commissions outside of conventions. Um, you know, I was thinking about opening them up, but I'm not sure... If that'll happen, I just got word that uh, some official work might be starting again soon. So, um, you know, whatever you might classify as free time will probably, uh, you know, decrease in the near future. So, I'm not sure if I will open up commissions or not, but... Time will tell, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Prowl and Jazz are another two popular figures. Pretty much all the main G1 crew wind up, you know, getting up there. Uh, commissions normally would be for something like this would be 120 and um, you know for something that's more just like a kind of head and shoulders a bust shot would be uh, 60 that's what I've been doing the last few years it had, it had kind of slowly been going up over the years but it's been I've held it steady there for a little while
like I said before, uh, pricing stuff like this is kind of funny. You never really know what the, the value truly is. Like I've put, I put a sound wave that would typically be a $60 commission up and, uh, I don't remember what it wound up being like somewhere around 150 bucks it went for. So you never know what the value is going to be in the end, but those are, those have been my typical prices. Just dropping a little shadow under here. Kind of going with the curve a little bit. Oh, maybe I'll just carry it right over there. You got a couple of uh, full body Alex commissions. Those are uh, those are nice. He puts a lot of uh, a lot of care into them. Did you get full color or black and white? It's one thing with mine. I, I usually only do uh, black and white. A lot of people ask for full body commissions from me and I, I don't do them generally because I feel like I can get a much more dynamic image on the paper if I do just like part of the robot. You know, every artist is different in what they prefer, but the, the more of the robot you put on the paper, the smaller each feature becomes, you know? And I think with my work at least, I prefer it. I prefer to have like more um, more focus on you know kind of the close up things like like the face and and the hands and um, you know I don't know. I just feel like it's a little more dynamic if you don't you know make sure you get all the way down to like the tips of the toes, you know. But that, that's just a personal thing. Other artists can, you know, make it really work well. Every artist is better at, at different things or prefers working with different things. So that's just kind of what I prefer. I, I would much rather have something like this than, you know, a full full body hound or whatever but a lot of people get consistent you know collections they collect the same thing from each artist so you'd want to keep keep the same type of thing going Oh, that's a fun idea. 
get a uh, get a reference. There are a lot of people who love those full body commissions. Oh, I don't I don't mean to speak down to them. Um I get a ton of people asking for them. So, you know. That's just a me thing. Sounds cool. So Josh did uh, digital color or, or uh, something with marker? Well, I guess if it was two versions, it must have been digital. That's a dumb question. That's awesome. I'm guessing it must be Perez you're talking about, as opposed to Bertram. Oh, I got way off the screen, didn't I? Let's do a little bit of the old uh, shine on the, the rocket here. Oh, I bet. Yeah, that's sounds like a nice one. So we're going to hit the heavier, uh, heavier line on the bottom here because everything seems to be in more shadow on the bottom. But I'm just going to kind of let this, let this line kind of wobble a little bit, for lack of a better word. Hey kiddo. What's up? Yeah, just so you know, everything you're saying is going to be on a stream here so yeah yeah well you're streaming yeah hi people i'm his daughter all right so dad look yeah 
Wow. Nice job. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Nico, I told you not to bring your ice cream down here. It's okay. Very um, messy. That's awesome, kiddo. Great job. Is mom back? You're asking me questions, Daddy. I know, I'll get to him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gizmo is, uh, yeah. Is mom back? Okay, that's good. That's okay. She told me I could come through. Cool. Bye, bye, pal. Yeah. No, it's all good. doing this bit, but that's that's part of the fun all right so what have i missed here how long did it take before you could draw these guys without references well um there's only a handful that i can draw without reference i mean at least accurately um most of the g1 guys um as far as how long that took um i don't really know actually but it's, um, it kind of depends what you're working on. Like, you know, when you're working on an issue by a certain point, you've drawn the main character enough that you just kind of know what they look like. So, um, you know, that takes several pages, but, um, yeah, it just takes, just takes a little time. But the G1 guys are like, the, the basics of them, they're in my head from when I was a kid, so, um, I don't know, Megatron, Starscream, Optimus, those guys I can pretty much have been able to draw from memory for a long time. I'm going to do kind of a, a mid, mid-grade, uh, shade here by just taking my straight edge and doing like a thin line between these two thicker lines. I should probably do the whiteout trick with uh, with this, but I'm just kind of stopping and going at every one of these little grooves. <clears throat> um mind sharing your art journey like how you got here um i did not go to art school um i think you can learn a lot in art school but um i don't know if art school is necessarily what you need to do this what you really need to do to do comics is be able to hit deadlines while producing quality work obviously but um being able able to keep up with the page rate is, or, um, yeah, that's pretty much the most critical part. Um, but I was pretty much self-taught. I just studied what I liked. Um, I used to imitate Wildman and, um, you know, Jeff Sr. and, and kind of the, the Marvel crew from when I was a kid and just kind of draw what I liked. Uh, that was what I liked. Uh, so I just kind of took a little bit of all their styles and, and it kind of influenced mine. Th none of this is really other than very early on. It's not really conscious. Like, I'm not consciously, uh, like trying to imitate their styles. I just like, you know, see part of it that I, I like, like 
Wildman's expressions and Jeff Sr., his hard shadows and or even modern artists like, you know, Nick's hands and different, the way uh, different artists do different things. And in the 90s, I was very much influenced by that crew of Marvel artists that uh, left informed image. You know, I just kind of like studied what I liked and tried to sort of do my best to uh, replicate that quality of work. And uh, I guess eventually it got me good enough to do this, to have somebody pay me for it. Um, so, yeah, no art school. I basically got involved online. Um, in the early days of IDW, I don't know if anybody that's uh, listening or watching was uh, around at that point, but um, they used to be very interactive with the um, message boards online. So I got involved there, and that was kind of the path towards um, having my stuff seen. Um, I wound up uh, winning a contest that was run on those boards by the Transformers Mosaic guys, Josh and Sean. And uh, this is a short version, but yeah, that, that basically got my artwork seen. Um, and when they needed something done and all the regular artists were busy, I wound up getting a call. So um, that's kind of the short version of how I wound up doing this, my art journey. Um, but I've been, uh, you know, doing artwork as long as I can remember. Even when these things first came out, I used to try to trace and draw my toys, so it's been happening for a long time. So let's see. Yes. Uh, yeah, those were my kids coming in here. They just got ice cream. We don't venture out a lot these days, but uh, one of the local ice cream shops was uh, offering up Sundays for the kids. So my wife took them down or she went down and, and got them, brought them back, put everything in, in new bowls and served them up. So Zombie Prowl, you were in the contest. You went against Andrew. Life got busy and I had to drop out. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was a pretty intense contest. I can't remember the exact time constraints, but I remember I was working full time and trying to get those pieces done also was like, that was a challenge. Especially because like the nerves were amped up because you were like, you know, <laughs> in your head, it was like, oh, my God, everything is riding on this, even though, you know, there really wasn't any guarantee that you were going to get work out of it. But um, it was, uh, I don't know, you knew that you were going to be judged on it. So that was a, enough motivation to want to really give it everything you got. And then there were three rounds, I believe. Uh, yeah, so that was it was pretty intense. I can understand you know, life getting in the way. It almost did for me. I can remember uh, my wife was like, I was when I was working on the final piece, which was this huge battle scene, um, my wife was like, not bugging me. I don't want it to seem like that, but she kind of didn't get why I was putting so much time into it. And uh, I was like, yeah, this is super important. So I wound up just putting a lot of time into it or whatever time we had and I guess it was good enough yeah I think it was like 500 something people actually entered. I, I don't think that many wound up uh, participating, but there were a lot of a lot of people that, that entered the contest. Um, so yeah, it was 
It was pretty cool, but but pretty intense too. And yeah, like you said, the early rounds were, I, mine was like a windsweeper and drag strip, and who else? There was a third, third bot in there. I can't remember. But then the second round, I got Circuit Breaker and Motormaster and Razor Claw. And you were essentially given, like, a cover assignment, like, given a scenario and a location and, um, you know, you had to make a cover out of it. The guys that ran it, the guys who did Transformers Mosaic, I know they put a lot of work and effort into it. And I am grateful for it, obviously. It was probably only a couple months after that contest that I got the email about that uh, Killing Joke cover. So, things moved pretty quickly. My memory's a little bit uh, fuzzy. Because that was, like, 2008, I think. So, you know, things might not have gone exactly how I remember. But I think that was pretty much close to it. I show the winning pieces on the stream. Well, I've got them somewhere, but they're actually not here with me so um i probably won't share them on the screen but i can uh stream sorry screen <laughs> um but i can probably upload them to twitter if you're still on twitter um or i could uh you know figure out another way to to show them if you're not on twitter Twitter's kind of like my go-to social media. I know it's kind of a cesspool sometimes, but I like it for better or for worse. Uh, how does my wife view my work? Oh, I think she she might actually see it as being a little more special than I do sometimes. Um, I mean, I don't want to sound like I don't appreciate it because I totally do, but, you know, she's the type who, like, if we ever enter a new comic book store, she'll, like, I had to beg her to stop doing this. She'll, like, run up to the counter and be like, you know what he does? And eagerly, you know, tell the person what I do. And most of the time, the person kind of isn't really that excited. So I was just kind of like, can, can you please not do that? But um, she definitely appreciates... Uh, what I do and is very supportive of it. Um, we've been together for a long time, so she remembers when I was just reading comics and, you know, had aspirations of one day maybe drawing them. Some of them really do sound like stripper names, actually. There's there's some interesting names in there. Let's see, I think I'm going to just darken this whole thing out. I don't need to keep that bit of separation there. I'm going to leave the yellow parts clear. Just darken in where it would be. I guess army green is what this part would be. I thought it was black when I started darkening this in but then I looked at the uh, looked at the animation model and it's actually green so that's okay it's still a darker color so it'll work hmm. yeah Oh no, I'm not, 
I haven't always been a uh, full-time artist, and most of the time I have had, and right now, actually, I do have a full-time job that I am currently furloughed from, so, um, you know, the bills are real, man, they don't stop coming, and, uh, you know, comic work is sporadic, so... You know, got to pay them bills. My wife is, um, she used to be a teacher and uh, she actually suffers, suffers from some chronic illnesses and had to kind of retire prematurely from her job. So we've been... Uh, or I've been the, the kind of sole breadwinner in the household for a lot of years at this point. So I pretty much always have multiple things going on <laughs> and don't sleep very much. But I prefer it that way. I actually... Oops, I'm just going to darken that all in, I guess. Um... It works well for me, so that's what we do. I am often very tired. So, you, Zombie Prowl, had Hoist, Razor Beast, and Rampage. You know, it would be fun to go back and look at all those. I wonder if they're even still up somewhere. Um, I know I have mine scanned. I think I have them scanned. And, uh, unless they're, like, on an old hard drive somewhere. Um, I know I definitely have the, uh original pieces for at least the big one, and I think the circuit breaker. I probably still have all three. <laughs> oh, look at that, I missed a knuckle on this other hand here. You did that one digitally. Um, do you work mostly digitally? Yeah, I'm familiar with uh, Winston from just, you know, online. I was uh, happy to see him get some uh, official work in. All right, let's add a little hard shadow underneath the, each digit here. Because why not?
It's a happy little shadow. Yeah, Winston does quality work. Uh, everything I've seen from him is, is really nice. So I would imagine you'll get a, a nice piece. <laughs> There's a lot to buy. <laughs> Good luck with that. You get the figures or pretty much everything. Figures, comics, cartoons, movies. I'll throw the side of this arm in some shadow too because it seems to be the way things are leaning here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ah, that looks fun. The manga. Throw this in some shadow here, this little piece. Sorry about that. Give you a little shake there. I'm 
All right, sorry about that. All right, so let's throw in some uh, thicker lines around some of the uh, main parts of Hound here. No one's hyped about it. Um, I mean, I'd love to take a look at it at some point. I just haven't uh, made the effort to track it down or anything. I, uh, I'm kind of fascinated by, by any of that older media that is from close to my, my younger generation. Like, like you can hear the headmasters in the background. I'm, I've had these DVDs forever and I just, I never actually watched them. And all of a sudden I'm like, you know, I really want to kind of experience them. So I started actually watching an episode a day earlier this week. So, you know, it's kind of fun to see the a continuation of that story that I grew up with. So as far as the manga goes, I don't know what continuity it takes place in. Maybe you can uh, enlighten me on that one, but I'd just be fascinated to take a look at it either way. I love that Trypticon, his base mode had a, had a name in this dino base. Dark Wizard, are you talking about the uh, the manga or the cartoon or, or both? I did see there was a basics episode on just the Japanese uh, continuity, so that's kind of on my on my list to watch at some point. I'm sure that'll answer all my questions. I'm pretty sure that um, after, at least after the cartoon ended, there was another uh, manga that sort of continued the story. But maybe it was tied in all along, like you say.
Dreamwave, um, I read those books, um, when they came out, I was super excited about them. Um, I think the quality was mixed, but, you know, overall when they came out, there was so much excitement about like a, a generation one comic book. Uh, I don't remember the year it came out, but I remember being pretty pumped. I immediately put it on my hold list at my comic shop and, I bought them up, bought all the Energon comics, the, uh, you know, Armada Energon, the War Within, the uh, Micromasters, pretty much everything they did, I bought it. And, uh, you know, we got our first introduction to a lot of the great artists like Don Figueroa and Alex Milne and uh, Josh Burcham. Um, I don't remember if Josh Perez actually did any Dreamwave stuff, but, um, yeah, it was kind of like our first, uh, first real taste of modern, or at least my first real taste of a, a modern take on Generation One, and it really kind of got me back into the whole thing, to be honest. Um, yeah, I was really glad it was around. I know there was some shady business happening which I can't really comment on because I wasn't involved, but, you know, that, that stuff's all pretty well documented. You can look it all up. So, obviously, I'm not not a fan of any of that. But um, as far as the comics themselves, you know, they weren't perfect, but I sure was excited to be reading them. I mean, I think IDW did, like far better things with like the concept of a revamped G1 but I think Dreamwave was at least the G1 thing was supposed to be a a direct um continuation or something like it from from the cartoon or if it wasn't it was uh darn close to it Sunstorm, yeah, I mean, there's one for you. Sunstorm was uh, like a new seeker. There was the e-hobby exclusive figure of it, and uh, they made him like some sort of god-like character. So that was pretty cool. And he did like a power bomb on one of the covers, which was pretty funny. Um, so yeah, there was there was a lot of good to be said about Dreamwave. And like I said, the, the not so good is all well documented too. You can look all that up. Yeah, Regeneration, that was IDW. That was a direct continuation from the Marvel comic, which they're continuing to explore some of my covers that are going to be coming out whenever they start publishing comics again will be in uh what are they calling it transformers 84 it's going to be it was a one shot and it did well enough that now there's a uh four issue mini i think i think that's what it is don't quote me on that but it's going to be uh simon Furman, and guido and john paul bove uh kind of back in that Generation 1 Marvel continuity, kind of exploring uh, some of the early events of that continuity. And uh, it should be pretty cool. I've done uh, the covers for the four, um, four issues of the miniseries. So hopefully you'll like those whenever they show them. Um, I'm pretty excited. I guess they showed the first one, but I'm excited for everybody to see the others. If I could, I would, like, tease them for you, but I don't think I can. 
But I was excited to draw the, the cover for the third issue because uh, it's a character that I, I always thought had a lot of potential. So maybe potential is not the right word, but I always liked the character from the old Marvel run and I got to kind of do them front and center um, along with a few other favorites. So that was pretty cool. You'll see that in the next few months, I would imagine. Yeah, there was some kind of legal issue with continuing War Within because the creators on the original War Within were never paid. And I don't know if... I don't know what the exact deal was and why they couldn't do it. But it has something to do with that. Some kind of legal issue. So, um, Yeah, I'd love to see it finished at some point, but I also... I like the way IDW kind of handled the early early days of Cybertron. So, you know, it's been done a different way at this point. So it feels like IDW wouldn't necessarily have a lot of interest in going back and exploring a different version of that. But who knows? I mean, the way they're doing, like, all these TV shows and movies, they're just reviving old stuff left and right. So maybe... Maybe there will be a market for bringing back War Within at some point, continuing it. Who knows? Anything's possible. A little darker outline around the bot symbol over here. Make it stand out a little more. All right, let's fiddle around with this background. What kind of advice could you give me to starting back in the Transformer comics? Yeah, there's a lot to digest, but um, I don't know what your budget looks like, but IDW did a nice job cataloging everything. Um, there are some really nice hardcovers, the IDW collection hardcovers, and they pretty much start at the beginning and will take you all the way through the entire run. I don't know if they've completed their initial run yet, but if if they haven't, I'm sure they will. Um so I would recommend those. I have a few of them. I don't have all of them, but it's a nice presentation. You can get the soft cover trades. And, you know, I'm sure there's a, like a, probably on the TF Wiki or, or some sort of other page like that, you could see uh, a list of reading order and stuff like that, but, um, yeah, I recommend either those hardcovers or, or going back with the trades. Um, the, the timeline kind of jumped around. It's kind of like Star Wars, like, should you start with the original three movies, or should you start with the prequels? Like, it depends on who you ask, really, but, um, the, uh, the first stuff that IDW put out was called Infiltration, then Escalation, and then Devastation, if I'm remembering correctly. It was Simon Furman, E.J. Sue. That's the, the very first IDW Transformers material. So if you want to start there, you can. But they also, of course, did prequel stuff, um, you know, later on. You could read... Um, like, one of the things I worked on, Spotlight Blur, was like a very early pre-war story. Um, and there's a lot of other pre-war stuff out there. I can't remember everything off the top of my head, but... Like I said, I'm sure there's a list you can find.
All right, so I guess I was going to make this kind of like the, the little rocky area that they always seem to be fighting on in the Generation 1 cartoon. I kind of relate that with Hound because he didn't really have a lot of screen time outside of those early episodes. My, my memory of uh, Season 2 is a little bit fuzzy, but um, from my recollection, he was pretty much just a Season 1 guy for the most part. So I always think of kind of the rocky, mountainous area where the art crashed. Um, it's supposed to be Oregon, right? But um, anyway, I don't remember if the actual location was defined in the cartoon or just in the comics. It was Mount St. Hillary in Oregon, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but I'm pretty sure that's accurate. So I'm just kind of throwing in a little mountainous background. I'm I'm just using my my light pens. I'm not going to do anything thicker than the number one on the background because I really don't want any of this to uh, stand out or dominate the picture. And I'm certainly no uh, expert in kind of these organic shapes. My my specialty is more kind of the robot stuff. So I'm going to try not to give too much advice. <laughs> here but what I like to do is just if it's gonna have any detail at all with something that's set way far in the background just keep it really light and like these mountains just kind of giving it a tiny bit of texture so you know what this weird uh, shape behind hound is really as you come into the foreground I'll define it a little bit more and just kind of like imagine a rocky surface so it's bumpy and and you know just catching shadows here and there there's no like definitive cliff or edge or whatever on the back in the back This mountain overlapping in front, I kind of imagine this more of like a, a closer cliff. They always seem to be like standing on cliffs, like there's some sort of road-like edge on the edge of these rocky mountains. So I'm kind of like insetting a piece here and there and just adding a little dimension, you know, like sort of angled rocky things and, you know, get hitting a few little little shadows here and there to kind of define that. Maybe have something sticking out a little bit up there. Just little short, quick lines and a few dots here and there kind of, kind of indicate a rocky sort of texture. Yeah, looks like Zombie Prime's loading you up with advice there. Always kind of keep in mind the uh, the direction of the horizon you know things are going to kind of naturally line up with the horizon here Right, Megatron Origins, that was one of the first pre-war stories they did. Oh, thank you.
Mountains are nice because you can kind of like, you know, just kind of make it up as you go along a little bit. As long as you have the general shape there and the, you know the direction of the landscape, you can just kind of like fill it in as you go. Unlike if, you know, this was set in the middle of Manhattan, you'd have to like have all your buildings drawn in exact perspective and, you know, know how every window frame is going, you know, different buildings, different types of structures. Anyway, yeah, mountains are good. So I'm imagining my horizon is kind of somewhere around here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a very light line across. I just kind of sketched it in. So I've just got like a few boulders kind of on, on your ground level here. And sometimes at the ground level, I find all you really need is kind of a little, just a little kind of little, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> a little, 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 little thing. Um, just a little hint of the ground level coming out there. So that kind of like grounds the image without having to, you know, do a lot of, you don't want to do a lot of definition here because really if this were a picture, you'd have your focus on the character and the background would kind of be blurred out. So anyway, it just kind of, that just kind of tells you that this is the ground level right there. And this is all ground. As you get closer, you can, you know, see a little detail, maybe a few rocks here and there. Just kind of use that space to help define what you already have. Help define the character. You can also, like, you know, on the outer parts, I found I find sometimes that, that'll help um, put a focus on the character if you've got kind of like some stuff kind of making its way inward, not directly, but you know, it kind of like brings your eye, or I don't know, tells you that this is the focal point. As if you couldn't tell just by the fact that that's the Transformer. <laughs> good, good fighting rocks, that's right. It's going to be a big battle here, I'm sure. The Decepticons will just fly right in because for some reason they can fly and the Autobots can't. And... Start shooting stuff. Yeah, the good thing about the IDW stuff, going back to that, is there's really something for everybody. Like if the kind of heavy action stuff is your your style, you get all the action and destruction, you know, with like some of the Asians things, Devastation and, you know, All Hell Megatron or whatever. If, if it's the more like, you know, of the downtime that you're into, they had a lot of the more political stuff and more than meets the eye. I'm sorry, uh, Robots in Disguise, which became just Transformers. It was very political when it first came out. And then, you know, more than meets the eye and lost light is really kind of its own thing. Um, but there's really something for everybody, which is, I really like that about the IDW continuity.
しもだこのようなことになればつまらんでや悪いことは言わぬ計画に協力せいあらら、アルバトロム様の俺を追放なんかするもんか I debated drawing the arc in here, but that seemed like too much. I didn't really want the background to dominate the picture. I didn't want it to take away from the subject. If it was like a group shot, it would have been cool to have the arc back there. But for, for just a hound thing, I figured just keep it, keep it just a rocky background here. Thank you very much, handsome rats. Um, I'm going to stay away from the part about which ones you could skip because, you know, I don't have I don't have a lot to offer in terms of what I think you can skip. But, um, you know, that's something that's more a matter of opinion, and there's no shortage of opinions out there, so you can certainly find that advice. Without my help. A tunnel in the mountain. Oh, I'm sure there's one there somewhere. But I'm going to skip that for now. I like to imagine there's a, you know, like if you see the sides of uh, rocky plains or mountain, it's kind of textured with stripes of different, different colors. So I kind of imagine there's some sort of different coloration going on in here. Stop messing around with us soon. Because right now we're just kind of at sort of a rocky ground level here. There's a few like boulders or large rocks on the ground level, but. It's gonna work. I mean, never, not every spotlight is a, absolutely critical to the larger story. So, yeah, I suppose you could skip some of those. Definitely don't skip Blur or Drift, because those are excellent. going to kind of define this ground a little bit, separate that from the rocks. I tend to kind of over overdo stuff like this, but that's fine. And I think I'm going to actually do another thing I won't often do and add in a few clouds. I mean, really, the, what you can do with digital coloring at this point, you know, most of the colorists are, you know, have the tools. I shouldn't say most. They all have the tools to drop in clouds and stars and things like that. And they look perfect and beautiful and amazing. And so, you know, when they're hand drawn in, then they have to color the hand drawn piece of it and you know that looks fine too but there's certain things with digital art that you it's just like the same with the uh 
like the physical art. There's certain things that you really can't replicate and vice versa. But the, you know, dropping in stars or clouds digitally is just like, it makes too much sense that why would you, why would you do it any other way, really? Unless you, you're somebody who's like just really excellent at drawing clouds or stars or whatever, but I'm going to draw in these clouds because I feel like it. So I just kind of try to throw a few big, big uh, poofs in and around some smaller poofs, <laughs> for lack of a better word. And the, the tops kind of mound up and are kind of roundish. The bottoms are kind of more flat-ish. And you know, you can always go back in here with your uh, white out or something if something doesn't quite look at, look right for you. Sometimes throw in a little extra bit of texture there. Uh, yes, that is Transformers Headmasters in the background. That's my way to get around uh, any uh, copyright issues. I'm sure on some level there's copyright issues with me playing this, but it, I figure it's so obscure that it's not going to get flagged, most likely. That's the hope, at least. This one's going to kind of go off the top of the page. I think most colorists would feel like this would be a pain in the butt to color, too, which is another reason I don't typically draw in the clouds on the, on the pieces that I do for published work. But, I mean, there's some... Some artists can really do cool things with this, but... I prefer kind of the digital clouds thrown in there, generally speaking. But I'm having a little fun with this now, so that's what it's all about right now. Just having some fun. Yeah, the theme is great. <laughs> I love the theme. And the, the exit, or the outro, or whatever you call it, the end theme. Handsome Ratch, what is your, what's your country? Belgium, nice. So it's hard to find, uh, Find the comics in Belgium. That's unfortunate. Yeah, the interesting thing about the uh, the comics is that, yeah, it did start out, everything was just a miniseries. There was no ongoing in the beginning. It was just one miniseries leading into another miniseries. Uh, Stormbringer, that was one of the early minis that was, like, advertised as all robots, no humans, all on Cybertron. So if that's your thing, that would be a nice one for you to check out. Thank you. 
Oh yeah. Um, DC and Marvel. Yeah, I guess that that would be what what they'd want to focus on, for better or for worse. All right, so I'm going to go through and add a little more of uh, kind of a little shine effect on some of the the metal parts, and then I'll I'll hit a little more. Just put some scuffs and detailing in there where we can. You know, every once in a while, IDW will offer some kind of deal through like Comixology or whatever, um, where you can get a bundle of their older issues for a very, very cheap price. Just trying to add a little texture here to kind of indicate that this is one of the metal parts here. It's that ending music. They make white out in Photoshop. Well, looks like we got through all the episodes on that disc. We're back on the menu screen. <clears throat> Press play again.
And I think there's a um, it's a hardcover for the Wreckers. Wreckers Saga. Right, yeah, Humble Bundle is digital only. Can you make an offer for Hound? Uh, I suppose if you want to message me, uh, we can we can talk about it. But, um, let's see. Yeah, between figure collecting and comic collecting, where where do you allocate your uh, your funds? A little bit of both, maybe. Not what I wanted. Make this bumper stand out a little bit. All right, I want to add a little bit of uh, just a little extra texture here and there. Um, Sometimes like along the edge of something and just throw in a little extra line. It'll add a bit of extra texture that you maybe didn't have before. Like along here, I think. Throw a little, little line in there to kind of highlight that. Every once in a while, if, if there's an area that's looking a little empty, you know, I'll just take a little, do a little notch in there. I should look at the uh, animation model. Or better yet, I'll look at the toy. Sometimes if things are looking a little empty, I'll look at the toy and, and uh, try to, uh, you know, see what's going on there. And maybe I can grab, like I don't really like whatever that is there, so I wouldn't add that, but, you know, got a few little dots up there above the thing, maybe I would add that, I don't think I will, actually, <clears throat> but, anyway, sometimes you can get, get some detail there that, <clears throat> excuse me, can make the piece a little more interesting. <clears throat> I'm going to add just a little bit more texture up here. Just another little, an extra plane. How about a license plate? <clears throat> what should that say? Maybe I'll stay away from that. I, I'm guessing this is supposed to be some sort of license plate. I think... I think I'm just going to add a little texture and leave that alone. I don't really know if it's supposed to be a license plate, and I'm not thinking of anything good to put on it, so... Just add a little extra texture. And of course... <clears throat> sorry about that. <clears throat> you know, being a Jeep off-road vehicle, military vehicle, it's probably not going to be super clean. So right here where the bumper is, sometimes I'll just add a little, little texture, you know, a few little lines like that, sometimes a little kind of mounted up. What I would imagine is either dirt or a little scuff mark there. And I usually have it going in towards the center. So like this side pointing that way, this side pointing that way. No more on there. This is one of my things I do a lot when I need to just add a little something to the surface. The little forearm area I wind up putting those little boxes. 
a lot of times the fingers, you imagine they're going to grab, punch things, so they'll have a few little marks on the fingers. They're not going to be totally clean. Oh yeah, Twitter message is fine. I'm going to add another little notch right here. I don't want to overdo it, but I felt like that needed something. I don't want to go full Alex on this, you know? Looks like on the toy there's some kind of uh, like a grooved bit under here. I don't know if you can pick that up. Again, I'm not a huge fan of that, so I'm not going to use it. by the head or definitely want some kind of scuff marks on the gun and this these fingers here sometimes in the rounded or mid grade areas I'll add a little kind of light line shading back here like I feel like that should have maybe a little mid-grade shadow there before the hard shadow begins like I said before sometimes on the rounded areas because it really would be like a gradient as you head into the more lit area the lit part of it so I'll just kind of Do some of that there. Not terribly noticeable, but it's, it adds something. Thank you. I like, I'm happy with how his face turned out. I know I say it a lot, but the face is really important to me. I need that to come out right to really feel, feel good about a, an image. Sketch with a blast wound. Yeah. Uh, sure. I mean, I did a... Uh, <laughs> one of my covers for the Robots in Disguise series had Wheeljack basically filled with holes. You know, spoiler alert. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've definitely drawn blast wounds before. It's the hardest part to draw about a Transformer in general. I think the hardest part for me is just the... Um, all the extra bits and pieces and when you have to place it into a natural environment or a natural, um, you know, natural interaction with other characters. Like, I'll be doing my layouts and, you know, have what I think is a pretty nice layout, a couple characters together, maybe right next to each other. And you know, you're just doing the loose sketch. And then when you, when you go to apply, like if I was drawing Hound and maybe I had him here and there was another character's head right here, but maybe when I was sketching it out, I forgot that he has this giant missile launcher right here. So then all of a sudden when I go to start drawing in my nice layout that I'm totally happy with, I'm like, oh crap, I've got that giant missile launcher. And, Sometimes you can kind of move and, and twist things to, to make it work, but that's like a big challenge with Transformers. 
as far as the actual parts of the Transformer, they don't... I guess if I had to say something that does challenge me, maybe uh, I'm good with perspective with um, flat lines and um, stuff like that. But when it comes to like rounded surfaces, like some of the more modern car alt modes that are more sleek and, and curvy, I guess I would say those are a bit more difficult than, you know, something that's kind of more boxy. But, you know, not not a big struggle, but it doesn't come as naturally to me as, um, you know, some of the more geometric shapes. The hardest part about drawing them generally is just that there there are so many little details that uh, can get really tedious. I always talk about the hands, you know, like if you're drawing a human hand, you know, you don't need to put all these little, and you don't need to do it for Transformers either, but I kind of like, I just do it and I can't seem to stop. But all the little notches in between every knuckle and everything, to draw a human hand is much less of that going on. Um, so, you know, there's all kinds of little things like that. How do they bend? You know, it, you can draw a human shape doing so many different things once you apply it to a big bulky robot. Like, oh, you know what? They really couldn't bend that way. Or there's a, you know, he can't look behind his shoulder because he has this here in that direction, you know? So those are some of the challenges with Transformers more so than just like the actual drawing of it. Hopefully that answered your question. I'm going to um, just kind of fiddle with these clouds a little bit, add a little more detail with the thinnest pen that I have, just like kind of a little shadow underneath the cloud. Missed a shade spot on the free hand side. I mean, I'm kind of playing with shadow a little bit because I've got this side of things in a hard shadow and I've also got the bottom, so that leaves this intermediate area um, not in shadow. But I think it would look more right. Maybe if I just darken in this piece here. So I kind of want a, a little separation between the two planes. Again, if this were colored, it would be, I'd want something picked up right there. Maybe this part here, I don't know. On the forearm. Oh, you're talking about this right here? to the big black out tiles. Oh, I see. Yeah. So this is uh, a dark green and these are yellow. So I, I kind of left, I'm leaving that. Again, if, that, if that's colored, I kind of want to see that yellow coming through here. Even though it's not like a light up a lit area. Sometimes it was the same with the Grimlock picture. Like the the parts of Grimlock that are black, I I really darken them out. But the kind of lighter gray pieces or the uh, yellow pieces, I left sort of open because um, you know I just want want the contrast between those two parts. I imagine it wouldn't be uh, Nell Yamtov coloring this if somebody was coloring it, so it would be more than one color. Oh, 
That was supposed to be funny. It shouldn't take a shot at Nel Yamtav. He, I like, love all those old Transformers images, and he was a big part of them. It's just going for a little humor there. A lot of times I would have probably called it at this point. I'm just kind of fiddling around with it a little bit since I've got some time before I need to stop. Hello, Clock Fox. You didn't bring any Starbucks for me? Thank you, though. I appreciate the uh, compliment. I think we're feeling pretty good about Hound here. Hound 2 trip. I'm only going to be on for like another 15 minutes, but um, good luck with your trip. probably wind up scanning this piece and posting it to Twitter for those who like to uh, color these. I want to add a little hard shadow under where the, uh, what I would call the bicep, curls under here a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks better. Darken out this little piece here, too. I'll kind of do a little uh, mid-grade shadow underneath the uh, wheel well things here. Just kind of separate that from the other parts here. Should also uh, get that sort of gradient effect here too. I 
Uh, yes, I have tried the uh, pen with Procreate. It works great. I, I definitely can see myself uh, messing around with that quite a bit. I feel like it'll take take a little bit of getting used to, but um, I do. I like the feel of it. It's actually a lot more forgiving, I find, than uh, using Photoshop with uh, my Cintiq. Um, the brushes are are. I don't know what the right word is, but you know they they feel like smoother. Um, I don't know if it's the Cintiq or just the version of Photoshop I have, but um, it's really nice, and I'm looking forward to messing around with it a little more. Yeah, it is. I would say it is uh, definitely closer than than Photoshop and my Cintiq. Feels a bit more natural. Alright, I think it's looking pretty good. I think I'm ready to call it. I didn't leave myself much open space to throw in a signature, but I'll squeeze it in down here. Let's see if I can give you a little bit of a Closer look. You get a good look. When you look at it close, you can see where uh, I might have overlapped a line here or there, but for the most part, he looks pretty tight. Pretty happy with that one. Thank you. So what time is it here? 2.52? Hmm, what should we do with the last eight minutes? Alright, let's do this. We got a few minutes. We'll do a little speed speed draw here as opposed to this kind of you know slower detailed approach. We've been been doing uh just throw somebody out. Who whoever's here, who do you want to see see uh a quick picture of here?
Oh, you're welcome, Clock Fox. Skids. Which version of Skids are we talking about? Like More Than Meets the Eye? Or Lost Light? Or uh, like a classic? More Than Meets the Eye. All right, first call was Skids, so let's go with that. I don't know if I'll be able to do more than that, but hang on a second. I have the general shape of his head in my mind. Oh, we'll just get a little reference here. All right. So, there we go. We're focused again. I do the old, uh, you know, Oval head shape with kind of the eye level and the, the mid face level. Just kind of loosely sketch in where where the eyes would be along here, where the nose would be, mouth, and kind of like just start filling in details from there. Throw in the cheekbones, where they would come down, meet the chin, a little notch under the chin. He's got sort of a, uh, I don't know what to call any of this stuff, which is kind of funny as I've started drawing this stuff live. I, I'm trying to talk about what I'm doing, realizing I don't, I don't know what to call all these little bits and pieces. I'll call this his mohawk. A lot of these guys have like a little vented mohawk up top. So we got that. And this little piece right here kind of comes up and down and then he's got these like side panels that uh, kind of turn into the little sides of his the little <laughs> see here we go I don't know what to call these every every transformer pretty much has these little cheek protectors here it's like they're playing baseball and they have a little helmet that goes over there cheek. And then there's uh this kind of comes down here. So you've got a three-quarter angle going here. And then one of the old round bits on the side of the head. It's not too pronounced. And this kind of curves around. So let's go up on the other side like that and like that. And as you go, you kind of see where it's not exactly how you'd like it and just kind of adjust accordingly. And I'll just kind of darken up the lines here. I don't really have time to ink it, but I'll just make it a solid pencil job here, ish. A lot of the more, more than meets the eye guys have this little kind of sunken in eye thing going on there, so I'll throw that in there. Got the old cheekbone. Does he have one of those chin things? Yeah, it looks like he does. So 
little notch there, I guess. Right, I guess that's a pretty, pretty accurate skids right there. Might have missed something, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's probably not a lot of sleep happening on the lost light. I think I kind of, uh, I would, I usually don't go this quickly, you know, I would kind of hyper analyze things a little more, but sometimes it pays to go fast. I could probably learn something from this. Anyway, that was fun. Uh, maybe I'll do some more of that uh, in future streams. Um, more speed stuff, quick head shots. Um, yeah, maybe uh, maybe I could do a whole whole stream about that. Just have people call out call out characters and just do them as quick quick as I can. Rattle through as many as I can. Um, but anyway, I thanks to you guys for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed uh, watching that hound uh, come to life or get finished up. Um, next week, I would like to do. A perceptor which some of you might have seen I have a poll up on Twitter for if you'd rather see the uh, IDW version of perceptor or the classic perceptor um, and also the other runner-up in the poll I took a while back was jazz and I, I I draw jazz all the time so what I might do is I was thinking about just kind of putting it out there on Twitter again to see if there's any non generation one version of jazz that you would like to see. Or, I mean, I suppose it could be like a later generation one, like pretender jazz or action master jazz, but, uh, something other than generation one jazz. So hopefully, yeah, maybe animated. That would be fun. Um, hopefully next week, that's what I'll wind up doing. I haven't fully decided if I'm going to stream all of those, but, um, I'd like to get them done because it was a, a three-way tie for third place in that poll, and I've, I will have drawn everybody else at that point, other than Perceptor and Jazz. So that's my thought at this point. It may change, but um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to call this for now, and um, thank you guys again for, for checking in and and getting in on the conversation it's it's fun to be a part of that and uh we'll do this again on monday hope you guys have a great weekend and uh yeah stay safe out there take care <laughs>